Meeting to order, uh, would you please call the roll? Mayor Jorgensen? Present. Commissioner Wygand? Present. Commissioner Kaler? Present. Commissioner Crowley? Present. Commissioner Skidmore? Uh, we do have four present, which is a quorum. Um, I'd like to welcome all that are attending today or tuning in on their electronic devices. Uh, today is Wednesday, November 20th, 2019. The time is 9.30 a.m. and uh, our regularly scheduled uh, city commission meeting. Uh, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, followed by the invocation uh, led by Pastor Fred Martin. Uh, so if you'd please join me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you would join me in prayer. Father God, we uh, come this morning uh, recognizing that we're approaching the Thanksgiving season. In that regard, you've told us in your scriptures that in everything we should give thanks. With that in mind, we would like to thank you, first of all, for the privilege of living in this community. Secondly, we'd like to pray for each of the employees of the city of Ottawa that you protect them, keep them safe as they carry out their duties. And finally, we would uh, like to come before you and ask for uh, your grace upon the um, Ottawa C City Commission. We're thankful for each of the individuals who serve in this position. Corporately, we would ask that you would give them wisdom and unity as they conduct the business of the city of Ottawa. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Pastor. That moves us on to uh, the consent agenda, items 6 and 7, which include the minutes uh, from November 4th, uh, study session, and November 6th, regular meeting, and as well as uh, approval of our agenda. Do I hear a motion? Mr. Mayor. Commissioner. I make the motion that we approve the consent agenda as presented. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded as such. Is there any discussion? If not, let's proceed to vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. Motion carries. That moves us on to uh, our new business in item 10. Mr. Mayor. Yes. Did you I'm sorry. I did. I, thank you for correcting me. Um, do we have any public comments this morning? We do not. Okay. Um, how about uh, at this time I'd like to give the commissioners a, a chance to declare any conflict or communication they've had that might influence their ability to consider today's issues in, impartially. Mr. Mayor. <coughs> Commissioner. Excuse me. Um, my business is involved with a couple properties on item 13. So when we get that item, I will abstain from any vote. Okay. Uh, thank you. Is there any others? If not, now let's proceed to item 10. Proclamation recognizing Ottawa, Kansas as a mindful city. This proclamation highlights the development of mindfulness in our city. Um, Dr. William Hale, mind, mind body health professional, will accept the proclamation, which reads as follows. Whereas research over the last 40 years demonstrates uh, societal benefits of mindfulness practice, including improvements in physical and mental health, reduction of substance abuse, recidiv recidivism, reduction of health care costs, improvements in organizational functioning, increased resilience of first responders, reductions of social prejudice, and increases of tolerance. And whereas Advent Health Ottawa, in order to make mindfulness tra training widely available, subsidizes it for all community members and community leaders. And whereas leaders in key Ottawa organizations, including the hospital, the mental health center, the city of Ottawa, the animal shelter, and the Ottawa Area Chamber of Commerce have trained in mindfulness and encourage it among their staffs. And whereas 10 organizations in the city have encouraged employees or students to train in and practice mindfulness and have paid costs of their training. And whereas the Elizabeth Layton Center values mindfulness, supports the training of its staff therein, incorporates it in, into therapies and train clients in it. And whereas 1% of the population of Ottawa since 2017 has been intensely trained in mindfulness-based stress reduction. And whereas another 2% of the population has been trained through the mental health center, and whereas the percentage of the Ottawa population that has been trained or intensively trained in mindfulness significantly exceeds the percentage trained in other cities. 
and whereas the extent of support of mindfulness among key leaders in the community exceeds the extent in other cities, and whereas <coughs> the developments of mindfulness in Ottawa have inspired leaders elsewhere to cultivate a mindful city, and whereas Ottawa, by its example, in the characteristics described above, defines the leading edge of cities in the nation that aspire to be mindful communities. Now, therefore, the governing body of the City of Ottawa, Kansas, does hereby recognize the City of Ottawa to be a mindful city. Signed this 20th day of November, 2019, by the Mayor. Dr. Hale, would you like to come forward and accept this proclamation? We'll smile for the camera. You'd like to say a few words? Thank you. You bet. It's a mark of distinction that Ottawa can be considered a mindful city. Uh, <coughs> and uh, as mentioned in the proclamation, no other city in the nation has uh, arrived at uh, two to three or four percent of its population uh, trained in mindfulness. The city administration is actually exemplary in regard to uh, mindfulness in that nearly a dozen of its senior staff have been trained and there's no other city in the country that uh, has that kind of um, mindfulness uh, among its staff. Uh, <coughs> and um, the what has come about in Ottawa could have only come about because of the work of uh, leaders from across the community who have been meeting together uh, for near, nearly three years monthly to work on cultivating a mindful city. Those leaders include Leslie Bjork, the CEO of the Mental Health Center, Matt Hine, the CEO of the hospital who has been particularly visionary in uh, bringing mindfulness in the, into the community. Uh, Richard Neinstedt, the city manager, John Cohen, the um, CEO of the, the Chamber of Commerce, and uh, John Holtzfeder, a, a representative of Ottawa University. So um, Ottawa really is the leading edge. Other cities uh, <coughs> aspire to um, uh, arrive at what has been accomplished here, and it's something that uh, can be built upon. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Ayo. Um, that moves us to item 11. Proclamation recognizing December 3rd, 2019 as International <coughs> Day of Persons with Disabilities. This proclamation, which should be read by Commissioner Wigan, uh, recognizes the rights of all individuals with disabilities and the importance of ensuring that they have access to the opportunities that are important to them. Marsha Hermrick, Accessibility Advisory Board member, will accept the donation, accept the proclamation. <coughs> Whereas the Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, was passed on July 26, 1990, to ensure the civil rights of citizens with disabilities. And whereas cities, counties, states, and countries around the world are celebrating efforts to protect the rights of those who live with disabilities. And whereas the City of Ottawa, Kansas, affirms the desire to protect these rights and recommits to shaping a future in which all members of this community can enjoy their <coughs> rights and freedoms. And whereas we all have a role to play in ensuring our communities are accessible and inclusive. Now, therefore, the governing body of the City of Ottawa, Kansas, does hereby recognize the rights of all individuals with disabilities and the importance of ensuring that they have access to the opportunities that are important to them as a beacon of hope to those who live with a disability by observing December 3, 2019 as International Day of Persons with Disabilities. Signed this 20th day of November, 2019 by our Mayor, Blake Jorgensen. Thank you, Tom. I understand that Charlotte is, I mean, uh, uh, Marcia is not present uh, to accept this, but Charlotte's going to act in her proxy. Do you like to say a few words? 
I do know that the members of the accessory advisory board is very pleased with what the city of Ottawa has done to help accessibility uh, within the city and that they would be proud to accept this proclamation. Okay. Thank you. That'll move us on to uh, item 12. 2019 Employee Service Awards. Um, each year, the League of Kansas Municipalities recognizes faithful, continuous service to Kansas communities. <clears throat> this year, the City of Ottawa is proud to recognize six employees with a combined total of 135 years of service to Kansas communities. Please join us as we take a moment to thank those who serve our community today and throughout the years. And uh, we have uh, Richard, or would you like to, to come forward and inter introduce, and I'll come down as well. Or, oh, okay. <laughs> we practice this. Yeah, I can do rehearsal. <laughs> you forgot to go to the Stuart Wilson is 15 years also, but Stuart's not here today to get his award, so we'll see that he does get it. Ed Thompson, 20 years. especially as a, as a big benchmark and, and uh, I've got a few words um, that I want to say here today on that so uh, and and uh, the 40 year award goes to Richard uh, Upton Ninestead uh, he began his duties as Ottawa City Manager on October 15th 2007 <coughs> following a 14 year tenure as a city manager in Fort Scott since beginning his career in 1980 uh, he has served the Kansas communities of Concordia, Stockton, Mays, and North Newton. And uh, Commissioner Crowley and Commissioner Kaler, I don't know if you remember what you were doing 40 years ago. Um, <laughs> I, was a, I was a high school sophomore, and so I was more worried about making weight and wrestling than uh, I was much else at that time. But um, uh, Richard graduated from high school in Beardstown, Illinois, and grew up in Kansas and Minnesota as well. He earned a Bachelor of Science in Public Affairs from Emporia State University in 1978, and a Bachelor of Science in Public Affairs, and, uh, and a Master's of Urban Affairs from Wichita State University in 1980. He holds the uh, uh, designations as a certified city manager and was recognized as a 2011 uh, recipient recipient of the Buford M. Watson Jr. Award for es Excellence in, in Public Management. He's a United States uh, Air Force veteran and was stationed in Kansas City, Missouri, and overseas in Germany, Italy, and Spain. 
Currently, Richard serves his community more in, than his professional office. He is a past board, board president of uh, Big Brothers and Big Sisters of Franklin County and past president for the board of the Elizabeth uh, Layton Center for Hope and Guidance. He has worked with Franklin County Habitat for Humanity on, on the Construction Committee, and he serves on the board of the Franklin County Development Council and is an ex-officio representative on the boards of the, of the ORC, the Ottawa Main Street Association, and the Ottawa Area Chamber of Commerce. Richard and his wife, Rita, have been married since 1977. In 2011, Rita retired after 33 years of teaching family and consumer sciences and now works for Ransom Memorial Hospital. They have three grown children and eight grandchildren, and I guess that's uh, seven grandsons and one granddaughter. So uh, I'd like to uh, present this to Richard. Uh, our congratulations. professional and personal life. There are 95 other hours of people that we recognize today. And um, in the 40 years, one, one of the first lessons I learned was how important it was for good citizens that are engaged and having outstanding employees. And I've had outstanding employees in every community I've been in that get up every day and want to do the right thing and serve their community and make it better. So I have a special thanks to all those employees that put their time and grade in and are able to achieve these milestones. Thank you. Thank you, ben. Thank you all for your service. And if I can ask you to, to uh, stick around after the meeting for a picture um, up here, uh, we'd like to have a picture taken of, uh, of each of the award recipients uh, today. So. Um, That'll move us on to uh, um, item 13. Request for approval of recommendation to add two new multifamily residential structures, four new single family residential structures, <coughs> one single family structure remodel, and one commercial remodel to the neighborhood revitalization program. Uh, these properties are located at 206 South Cedar, 218 South Cedar, 916 North Cherry, 920 North Cherry, 619 South Elm, 735 North Mulberry, 217 South Ash, and 930 North, uh, excuse me, 530 North Main. And we have uh, Charlotte uh, Newkirk from the Planning Department to speak on this item. Charlotte. Each one of these properties meets our criteria for being placed into the neighborhood visualization program. Uh, the multifamily units are, will be five units each. Um, then we have the four single-family residents. We have the one um, remodel on Ash Street, which will make that area look very nice because the structure does need some help. And the commercial remodel is in addition to their present business. Okay. Do we have any questions, questions uh, for Charlotte? Uh, do I hear a motion? Mr. Mayor. Commissioner. I move that we approve <coughs> the recommendation to add the structures to the neighborhood revitalization program. No, I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded as such. Is there any discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, let's proceed to vote. How do you vote, Commissioner Skidmore? Yes. Commissioner Wigand? Yes. Commissioner Kaler? Yes. Commissioner Crowley? Abstain. Mayor Jorgensen? And I vote yes. Motion carries. That moves us on to item 14. Request for approval of ordinance annexing property at 2324 East Logan into city limits. Uh, Nick Ford, the owner of uh, Central RV located at 2324 East Logan, signed an annexation agreement giving the city consent to annex. And we have uh, uh, Fire Chief um, uh, Tim Mathias uh, to speak on this matter. Good morning, Mr. Mayor and Commissioners. Uh, this has been a, uh, a long process for all entities involved, the owner, the city, and, and the county. and. Uh, agreement was signed um, on this on this pr 
property uh, once <coughs> the construction was completed that they would be annexed into the city and we're, we're wrapping up construction. Um, we have been in talks with the county uh, codes and the inspection department and the city will be involved in the final TC uh, of the final CO of that that business so um, and it and the city's ready county's ready uh, I believe Nick Nick Ford the, the owner is ready um, and we're just right in the final stages of wrapping this project up so uh, I think uh, the the wastewater was has been hooked up or is being hooked up and the water is is right right there too so uh, mm -hmm. it's Okay. Any questions for for Chief Mathias? Uh, Chief, is there a certain day that this will take effect? Do we know yet? Well, I, I don't think we know yet. I okay. think we have to get out there and Wait do some inspections and okay. see uh, what what is needed, and then uh, typically that's it, we'll work pretty quick through that process. Okay. But I don't know the exact exact dates. Okay. okay. City Attorney, <clears throat> upon publication of this ordinance, the, an the annexation will take place. So the, the property will come into the city limits based on your vote today. As soon as we publish this ordinance, then it has to be recorded over with or filed with the Register of Deeds uh, per state statute. But the annexation will happen immediately. Okay. The, the other connection issues, the other completion issues of compliance with uh, city codes, uh, will start as soon as the annexation takes place. And this is a bit of a unique project in that much of the construction has taken place while the project's in the county, under county supervision and their codes. Once the annexation takes place, uh, once the certificate of occupancy has been issued by the county, all future uh, inspections and standards will have to meet city standards at that point. So what's built is built, but what happens next will have to meet city standards. And the reason the fire chief is presenting to you is a big part of that is our life safety standards. Uh, that will have to be met for this building since it is open to the public. Yeah. And that uh, particular agreement was signed on uh, June 6th of 2018 by all, all parties. Okay. All right, thank you. Any other questions for uh, Chief Mathias? <coughs> Do I hear a motion? Mr. Mayor, I'll make the motion we approve item number 14 on our agenda. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded as such. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, let's proceed to vote. <coughs> How do you vote, Commissioner Crowley? Yes. Commissioner Skidmore? Yes. Commissioner Wygand? Yes. Commissioner Kaler? Yes. Mayor Jorgensen? And I vote yes. Motion carries. That moves us on to um, item 15, report by the city manager. Um, the only thing I have, commissioners, is to wish you and our community a uh, happy and safe Thanksgiving. Very good. We'll move on to reports by the city commissioners. I'll start here on my left. Uh, Commissioner Skidmore? Well, uh, I've been out of the country for a couple of weeks, and I just want to say it's great to be back. And uh, that's the thing about it. When you leave the country and you come back, and maybe you've noticed this too, uh, it's great to be an American citizen and come back to this wonderful country of ours and all the amenities that we enjoy and we take for granted many times. But it's good to be back. Very good. Commissioner Wagan. Thanksgiving. I just want to uh, say uh, thanks to all city employees, to Richard and those mm -hmm. who are recognized today for their uh, continued loyalty and uh, good work and, and service to our community. With, it just makes us all better when our employees are dedicated to making Ottawa better. Yes. So uh, thank you very much. Good. Good. Well said. Commissioner Kaler? I would agree with what Commissioner Wygan said. Um, the employees of the City of Ottawa are really what make um, the City of Ottawa wonderful. So uh, thank you so much for your service. Yeah. Commissioner Crowley? I have none. Okay. That moves us on to uh, reports by the mayor. Um, I have uh, nothing further to, to add um, other than uh, kind of echoing what Commissioner Skidmore said as far as it's good to be back home. I, I spent uh, uh, several days out of the country as well. And, um, you know, the, it's, it's hard to uh, realize what you have until you see how, how other people live and, and so forth. And uh, awful glad to, to live right here in Ottawa, Kansas, and, and uh, what, what we do have in our community. So um, I count myself lucky. Um, under announcements, we do have a study session on the 25th um, right here at City Hall. Uh, Thanksgiving holiday will be on November uh, 28th and 29th, which is a, a city holiday, so offices will be closed. And then the mayor's uh, Christmas tree lighting will be that Saturday at uh, uh, November 30th at 5.30 p.m. at Haley Park. I invite you all to attend that. 
and then the, the following uh, Monday we'll, we will have a study session as well. Is there anything else that should come before this meeting? Hearing none, we'll call it adjourned. If we can get those recipients to come forward for, for a pic quick picture here.